Hi everyone, I'm Shannon and welcome to today's video. So I am going to do the best and worst staterooms on the Disney Wonder. So I've, what, have you seen my videos? I've done this on Walt Disney World um, Resorts as well as I just did one on the Disney Magic. Now I will say, if you watch the Disney Magic, it's pretty much gonna be the same thing because it's pretty much the same ship but I wanted to do two separate videos that way because there are some slight differences within the, the two different cruise ships. So I did want to do a little bit um, comparing the two and that way it's also easier to find for someone who might be sailing on the Wonder or on the Magic. So that is what today's video is about. So if you're looking forward to cruising on the Disney Magic, stay tuned. So let's, before we get started, let's go ahead and go through all the different categories on the Disney Wonder. I'm gonna start with the inside, go all the way up to Royal Suite and kind of break it down. Now I did count these manually. So uh, I'm gonna give you the breakdown of how many cabins are in each category, but I will tell you, I did this manually. So if they're off by a few numbers, I am sorry, my math or my counting skills may not as be as good as I thought, but it's gonna be pretty close. But I wanted to give you an idea of how many, how many rooms are in each category. So let's get started. So as I mentioned on my Disney Magic video, if you'd like to see the Disney Magic, our, our vlog on Disney Magic, I will post a link below to the playlist. We have five days on the Marvel Day at Sea and you can kind of get a feel for the ship um, while we were there and we were on deck six. So let's get into the categories. So let's start with the inside and I have my little cheat sheet here. And the interior, there are 166 cabins. And this is category 11. So the interior, there's interior and a deluxe interior. This is strictly interior. And in category 11, there are no split bathrooms. So this is the one category that does not have a split bathroom. Um, Disney Cruise Line is known for having their two bathrooms, basically one with a um, toilet and a sink and the other with a sink and a shower tub combo. Um, but category 11 is just kind of that traditional, um, the traditional cruise cabin bathroom that has the um, sink, toilet, and then the t uh, tub shower combo in one, and it's all in one. So if you don't need that, uh, that split bathroom, then category 11 is a great way to go. If not, avoid it. And then also avoid an indoor inside guarantee because that could you could be booked in a uh, category 11. So again, 166, they are 11s A, B, and C, and they are on decks two, five, six, and seven. Deluxe interior, there are 102 of these. They are 10A, 10B, and 10C, and they are on decks one, two, five, six, and seven. And 10A is where they have those secret porthole rooms. I'll get into that in a little bit. Very, very highly desirable rooms. Basically, they have a porthole that's a little obstructed, but you're getting um, a porthole outdoor view with um, for, for the price of an interior cabin. So those are very, very desirable. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Then you have Ocean View. There are 229 of them, and they are on decks, um, uh, sorry, one, two, five, six, and seven, and they are 9A, 9B, 9C, and 9D. And then you have the Navigator Veranda, another very, very popular category. There are only 30 of them, and they are on decks five, six, and seven. And if you don't know what a Navigator Veranda is, it's essentially a cabin that, or balcony that is enclosed. And some are a little more enclosed than others. There's one that's kind of a partial Navigator's Veranda that's categorized, which is also highly desirable. There's two of those. Um, it's kind of enclosed. So if you wanted a balcony, but you had young ones, I think a Navigator Veranda is very, very desirable because it just feels a little safer. Um, you know, I don't know about that, but I personally have never been in one, but it just seems very um, nice to be kind of enclosed with that. But there's only 30 of them. And again, they're very, very popular. Then you have the Deluxe Veranda. They are, um, there's 252 of them. They're 5A, 5B, 5C, and 6A. And um, they are on decks five, six, and seven. And then you have the Family Veranda Stateroom, and they are all on deck eight. And they are um, 3A, which are, there's 11 of those, and those are all concierge. So 
3A category is the only concierge category that is a regular stateroom. Um, well, it's a family veranda, but it's a regular stateroom that has concierge. There's only 11 of them, very, very highly desirable. They go fast. And then you have 4A, 4B, and 4C. And the family veranda basically has um, the regular the veg regular room, it's a little bit um, longer because it also has a Murphy bed, so it can fit five rather than four. And then you have the one bedroom suite. There's 18 of them, all on deck eight, two A and two B. And then there's two two bedroom suites, also on deck eight, um, and they are one B. And then one A is the royal suite and they are also on deck eight and there's two of them. So those are all the categories on the Disney Wonder. Now, when trying to select a cabin for your uh, cruise, there's some standard kind of protocol as far as things to avoid or consider when you're making your selection. So one of the things is to always try to avoid being below the pool because when they're moving the pool chairs, um, either early morning or late at night, sometimes you can hear them. Now, this interesting thing is that the pool deck is deck nine. You know, the Magic and the Wonder are both very small ships. So you're going to, the whole concierge deck is deck eight, which is directly below the, the pool deck. So unless you're concierge, that's not gonna be a, a problem for you. Um, but if you are concierge, I would maybe try and decide where you're gonna, if you can select, obviously if you are in the Royal Suite or the two bedroom, there's only gonna be two of those state rooms. So you're really not gonna have a choice, but otherwise you might wanna see what's directly above you um, when you're deciding. Another thing is if you are prone to motion sickness. Now, I personally am not, but I did have one really rough night the first night on the Disney Magic. We were all the way toward the aft and we it rocked really bad that first night and I got seasick. So, which normally didn't happen. I had no other issues the night before. I mean, the rest of the cruise, but I did have one problem that first night. There were a lot of people that had problems that first night, but again, we were totally towards the aft. So if you are prone to uh, motion sickness, what they always say is to stay in the middle of the ship and toward the bottom. So if you are gonna be on deck two and maybe an inside cabin or somewhere toward the middle, not on the aft or the forward. So kind of keep that in mind. Also, try to avoid adjoining rooms if you don't need it. If you need an adjoining room, then obviously you're gonna get it. But if you don't need an adjoining room, then try and pick a cabin that does not adjoin because when you, um, when you do get, a, uh, get an adjoining room and you don't need it, you can hear a lot more. Those walls are a little thinner than if they weren't adjoining and you're gonna be able to hear a lot more in that cabin, probably stuff you don't wanna hear. So keep that in mind. Um, other things is kids club. So we were on deck six, the kids club was on deck five. And while that was fine, I would have much rather had been on deck five. It would have made it a lot easier. We were one floor above, so it really didn't make it that much more difficult, but being on deck five would have just made it a little bit more easy. Obviously, the also the um, one of the theater is on deck five, so that would have been, um, I think if I were to do it over again and we were selecting our cabin, I might try and select a cabin on deck five. Um, if you are someone that wants to be near the gym, the gym is, I believe, on deck nine. So that's something to consider. So you really just kind of have to take into consideration what you want to be close to. Now, again, the Magic and the Wonder are smaller ships, so you don't need to really worry about um, where you're going to be as far as if you're going to be... Um, you know, it, it, going from the back to the front is really not that that bad. Um, you know, I've stayed on the oasis of the seas on Royal Caribbean, now that's a walk. <laughs> it is a long walk. But on the Magic and the Wonder, it's really not that bad. But if it's something that you wanna be close to, like the Kids Club, you know, there was one time my son called us and wanted to get picked up, and I wanted to, you know, obviously get there as fast as possible. So keep that in mind as far as things that you wanna be close to in regards to when you select your stateroom. So those are some basics to consider when you're selecting your stateroom. And again, that goes for any cruise on any cruise line. So, but let's get into the best and worst staterooms on board the Disney Wonder. Okay, and we're gonna start at the website that I look for all the cruise deck plans and that is cruisestateroom.com. And as you can see, there's pretty much every ship that you can imagine is here. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna look for the Disney Wonder 
and just click on it. And it is going to bring us to the website cruisedeckplans.com, which is owned by the same uh, company. And uh, let's just do a quick overview of the Disney Wonder. So let's click on deck 11, and there you see it's just the vibe. Um, deck 10, you'll have Wide World of Sports, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, Concierge Lounge, The Cove Cafe. Um, there's the, this is mainly the sports deck. So a lot of this middle port right here is open air. Um, all the deck chairs are going to be around. This is the entrance for the, one of the slides and there's Paolo right there. So let's go down to deck nine and there you have Cabanas, Mickey Splash Zone, the Aqualab, Dory's Reef, um, Pete's Boiler Bites, Ice Cream, Pinocchio's Pizzeria, the Goofy Pool. Uh, there's the other Cove Cafe. And then this is the Quiet Pool. And then, of course, the Spa and Fitness Area. Deck 8 is mainly, um, it's all cabins. And this is where all the concierge level cabins are. So as you can see, this is where the suites are, the big rooms, and uh, it's even, even bigger rooms. Deck seven is also all rooms, and deck six as well. So as you can see, deck six is all rooms as well. Now when you get to deck five, you'll see there's some state rooms, but then you also have the Bena Vista Theater, the It's a Small World Nursery, Disney's Oceaneer Lab, and then Disney's, I mean, our Oceaneers Club, and then Disney's Oceaneer Lab. Now what you can see right here is this area connects. So this connects the two. The entrance for the Oceaneers Club is around here, Small World Nursery is around here, but then the Oceaneers Lab entrance is right here near the stairs. And then you have some more staterooms on the forward part of the deck. Deck four is the Walt Disney Theater. This is where the live shows take place. The Buena Vista Theater is where the movies take place. Um, then you have some uh, Mickey's Preludes Bar, Mickey's Mainsail, White Caps, uh, D Lounge, and uh, Shutters, which is where you pick up your photos, and then the Animator's Palette. And Deck 3 is Tiana's Place, and uh, the Promenade Lounge, Triton's, and um, I guess it's Ozire, and let's see, Crown... Um, Crown and Fin Pub, I think it says, and Cadillac Lounge. And then you have deck two, more staterooms, all staterooms, and then deck one, which is also the tender. This is where you tender here, north the back of the ship, and then the forward of the ship, you have some more cabins. So that's a quick overview of the Disney Wonder uh, deck plans. Okay, so we're gonna start at the deck two, and we're gonna start with the lowest level, which is interior, which is category 11. So there's 11A, 11B, and 11C. And just as a general rule of thumb, the letters generally distinguish where on the ship the staterooms are located, with letter A being the most desired location, so midship or on a higher deck. Um, so with 11C, this is probably the least desirable location, which is going to be forward on a lower deck. So, um, and one of the things I love about this website is you have this click right here. You can click right here, and this is going to bring photos. So you can take a look at the photos of this cabin. And then if you see a little YouTube video, it'll show you a link and it will link you to that video that is on YouTube. So it's really great. And this is the actual cabin. It may be a couple years old, but it is the actual cabin or stateroom that you're looking at. So 11C is um, forward and it is, um, I think there's only... 13 of them. So there's not that many. They're all the way forward. So if you're prone to seasickness, you might want to end up on the deck too. But I would say you probably don't want to be in 11C. You would probably want to be um, maybe 10B in the middle. But um, if you're not prone to seasickness and you really just don't plan on being in a cabin and you just want to get on a Disney cruise, then 11C is probably where you want to be. Now, moving on, we're going to go to 11B, and 11B is where there's some kind of special cabins. I'm going to show you those now. So 11B, they're on decks 5 and 6, and then on deck 5, you will see, um, so it's these blue ones right here. So there's 8 on the blue, so you're going to see they're on the back too. So there's some on the back, on the aft, 
but then there's also some on the forward. And these eight have a sideways configuration. And so some people have said that these cabins tend to feel um a little bigger or most more spacious just because of the way you come in you come in through here and it's a wide angle so I'll click on here and just kind of see some pictures this cabin actually has quite a few pictures and you'll see that um you know it's still a small cabin it's an inside cabin but the way it's configured you're actually walking into the living room and the bedroom is um has the little dresser vanity area here and then the door is um see there's a curtain right there between the sofa and the bed and then here on this side is the bathroom now also i forgot to mention that all inside cabins the category 11 as i mentioned before do not have the split bathroom so they do not have two separate bathrooms just just one with everything there so if you are going to get an interior cabin or an inside cabin i would try and go for this 11b there's as I, you can see there's eight on deck five and then if you go to deck six you will see that there are quite a few 11b but um, there are, I guess that's 10 of these cabins. Um, so there's 18 total, there's 10 there, and that's where I would wanna be because I think that those are sideways. Now, personally, um, and as you can see, there's 11B over here, but of the 11B category, I think those sideways configurations are your best bet. However, if you have kids and if you're on a Disney cruise, more likely than not you have kids, I would love to be on deck five. Our one cruise on this on the Disney Magic, we were on deck six, which wasn't inconvenient. We were all the way in the aft. It wasn't inconvenient. But to be on deck five, especially to be, let's say we're in this 5013, you're right next to the Oceaneers lap, which is the entrance is right here. And if you need to go to the Oceaneers Club, it's right over here. Very, very convenient. You don't have to worry about elevators. You don't have to worry about stairs. Very, very convenient. So if I had to do it a cruise again, then I would absolutely try and get on deck five if the category that I booked was on deck five. So of these, I would go for one of these eight or um, the other 10 on deck six. Now going to 11A, you'll see, uh, let's see, they're gonna be on deck six. There's nothing special about them. They're just in the middle of the, uh, of the, of the ship. So there's these like, I guess, light green, and then they're on deck seven as well in the middle. So 11A, if you're really concerned about seasickness because you want to be in the middle of the cabin, 11A or B, B will obviously bring you lower. Um, but I think the best bet in the inside category are those 18 sideways configuration cabins. Now we're going to go to the deluxe interior staterooms, and that's 10A, 10B, and 10C. And we're going to start off with the, I would say, the worst in this category. And that's pretty much anything on deck one. So that is going to be category 10C or category 90. We'll get to 90 in a little bit. But 10C, um, some of these cabins, there are a few on deck two, but some of these cabins are on deck one and the reason why i would say not to pick deck one is because you only have access to one elevator now the elevator is pretty close but if you're trying to go to the back of the ship you know you would have to walk all the way let's say we'd have to walk here to backtrack so um and then i just having been on the ship deck one is very very inconvenient to get to sometimes you just might not have an elevator get to you so i think being on deck one um, you'd probably be using the stairs quite a bit and it's just a little inconvenient so if you can avoid it um, i would say avoid deck one um, but that is category 10c so that i would say is the worst uh, state rooms in this particular category not bad state rooms just the worst the least desirable now going up to deck two You'll see, um, let's see, that's 11C. And let's see, they're gonna be at the back. So the 10C are to the back. So if you booked 10C, I would personally rather be in the aft than on deck one. So be on deck two, nor towards the aft. That's personally what I would do if I booked a 10C cabin. Now moving on to 10B, 
Um, 10B is going to be also on deck two, and there's 48 of them. And it's these, I guess, flesh color, pale beige color um, cabins. Now, if you want to be near the laundry, you plan on doing laundry on your cruise, um, you could pick one of these cabins, be right next to it. However, if you don't plan on doing laundry, you don't want to have maybe some high traffic areas. Don't know how much traffic. I didn't do laundry on my cruise, but maybe you want to stay away from these. Um, there's some here. These are obviously going to be very, very center. Probably the, the most desirable in this category would be these 2063 to 2585. That's going to be the most um, central in this location on deck two. But again, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these. Just a matter of if you want to be close to the elevator, close to the stairs, etc. Now 10A. 10A is where it's at. We're going to start with deck five. And this is what they call the secret porthole cabins. There are eight of them. And these are interior cabins or interior staterooms that have a porthole that is obstructed. Therefore, it is categories as inside, but you do have a porthole. So you do have an ocean view, though it is obstructed. So what I have seen, and there's these are these purple ones. So 50, 20, 50, 22. 5024, 5520, 5522, and 5524. The two that I have seen from my research, now I haven't stayed in any of these cabins, but the ones that I've seen that have the least obstruction are 50, 20, 55, um, and 5520. This I think are also fantastic because again, if you have kids, you're right next to the Oceaneers Lab and very close to the Oceaneers Club. So you're very, very close. You're on the same deck. So I think these are highly desirable cabins and I do understand that they go very, very quickly. So let's just take a look here and see if we can see a picture. And I don't know, you'll see the uh, you'll see the porthole. I'm not sure if you see the obstruction, but there you see the porthole. So very, very nice. Obviously this picture is from 2010. Probably, uh, hopefully the interior has changed, but the porthole probably hasn't. So there's you have it. Those are the 10A secret porthole cabins on deck five. And there's no other um, on that deck. Let's see, deck six. So no, deck six, we're going to go to, there's going to be two on deck six. And the two on deck six are also secret porthole cabins. There's no pictures here, so we can't take a look. But 6006 and 6506 are also these secret porthole cabins. So there you go. Um, these are very highly desirable. Obviously, they are between um, an ocean view here and then an interior here. Very, very desirable. I would still prefer to be on the fifth deck um, just because it'd be closer to the kids club, but I think these are great as well. And then if you're not really worried about the secret porthole or you just want to be in an inside cabin, there are um, several, I think there's nine on deck seven. They're all in the forward and there's that one handicap accessible cabin. I will go over handicap accessible later on in this um, video. So there you have it. Those are the deluxe interior category 10. And um, I guess the best in those categories are those eight secret porthole cabins. So now we're going to move on to the Ocean View cabin. There's 229, and they're on decks 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. And they are categories 9A, 9B, 9C, and 9D. And again, we're going to start with the worst or least desirable in this category, and that is going to be on um, deck 1, and that is category 9D. So um, these staterooms only have two small portholes instead of one large porthole. And there's also, as I said before, there's no access to the aft elevator. So I would say these are going to be the least desirable in this category. Let's see if we can get a picture of the, um, of, yeah, see there's the two portholes. So, I mean, obviously this person seems to have been enjoying her cabin, but they're two. So the ocean view is very small. You'll obviously be very close to the ocean. Um, you'll be almost at uh, water level. But um, personally, I think if I would, I would personally rather be in um, maybe 10A in one of those secret portholes, then 9B. So sometimes an upgrade isn't always an upgrade, so keep that in mind. Let's move on to 9C, and 9C is going to be on deck two. Actually, both 9B and 9C, so let's talk about them at the same time. So 9C and 9B are on deck two, and these are, um, so 9C are gonna be the ones that are all the way forward, and I believe all the way on the aft, so that's 9C. 
and then 9b are they going to be the ones in the middle so i think it just depends on how much you're going to save if it's a matter of a few dollars and it's not big of a difference then i would definitely you know go and splurge and get 9b just because you'll have a more central location but i don't think you're going to have an issue with either 9c and 9a the good thing about the wonder um, and the magic as well is that they're very small ships so they're not you know going from the aft we were we were all the way on the aft so to go to the forward was not that in that inconvenient so um again nine c are going to be on the forward and the aft nine b are going to be in the middle i think it just becomes depending on pricing and which you prefer now moving on we're going to go to 9a and they start on deck five and let's go here and i believe they are all forward, correct, yes. So 9A, everything is going to be forward um, in the forward portion of the cabin because the more towards the middle and the back all have um, verandas. So here you see um, deck five, uh, deck six, there you go. And then there's two handicap accessible right all the way forward. And then deck seven. So again, it just depends if you book category 9A, which you prefer. Again, personally, I would prefer to be on deck five, as I've stated before, just to be close to the kids club. So there you have it. Those are, I guess, my best and worst for uh, the ocean view category. No special cabins here. I think it's just a matter of pricing, what you can get, what's the most, and where do you want to be? Um, personally, if I had to book, I would probably try to book 9A because I it, because I would be able to be um, near the the kids club. Now, staying on deck five and going towards the back, we're going to see category 7A, and that is the deluxe ocean view stateroom with navigators veranda. And um, a navigators veranda is that enclosed veranda. And I'll show, try and show you, here's a video, but we'll we'll click on a picture later on. There are um, 10 of these on deck five, 10 on deck six, and 10 on deck seven. And these are basically enclosed verandas. These give you a, um, a veranda view, but I guess they could probably just, they're not an open balcony. Now, the interesting thing here is there are four that are not fully enclosed and they are on deck six and seven. So let's go up to deck six. And on deck six, they are 6134 and 6634. So it's gonna be these two staterooms here. Doesn't look like we have a picture, but let me show you here um, 6136. This is what a ver um, navigator's veranda looks like. My understanding is that many people who have young children prefer the navigator's veranda because here's the balcony, but it's enclosed. So that feels, it does feel a little safer. You've got this really cool map. My son loves maps. So it gives you, um, you can just kind of feel that you've got this large porthole, but it's not a window, it's an actual, you can actually see the ocean. And then you have a chair right here. And then here's just a picture of the stateroom and the stateroom is like anything else. But you have this little bench here. So that's the navigator's veranda. Now the ones that are open, let's, we'll go to deck seven. But so these two, 61, 60, 61, 34 and 66, 34 don't look like this one. Those other um, eight will. And let's look at deck seven. And um, we'll see, there's a video here. Let's see if we can look at the video. And um, you'll see here there's 10 again. And then 7120 and 7620 are the two that have um, partial openings. And let's see if we have any pictures of it. Um, yes, here we go. So here is a picture. So you can see the picture of the balcony. It is not that balcony, it's just, a, it's more covered. So it's partial, I guess you could say it's a partial navigator's veranda. So if you want that enclosed kind of cave type of feel, don't book these cabins. But if you want a less expensive veranda, then book this um, these four cabins because you have like the covered, but you have kind of the regular balcony. So it's kind of a cross, kind of a hybrid in between. So again, the Navigator's Veranda category I've heard is very desirable. There's only 30 of these on the, on the entire cruise ship. They're on decks five, six, and seven. Personally, if I were booking a Navigator's Veranda, I would probably want the enclosed balcony. And then again, I would wanna be on deck five because I would wanna be close to the kids club as I've stated before. 
Okay, so staying on the aft, you're going to see, we're gonna go now to the deluxe veranda category, and there's four, there's four in this category. There's 5A, 5B, 5C, and, five, and 6A. So six, um, the category six staterooms are, they're just like the category five staterooms. However, they either have an undersized, an obst obstructed, or a white wall veranda. And I believe on the Disney Magic, they all have white wall verandas. Um, and this can actually be a great thing if you get a great cabin. And so we're gonna look at 6A. And we actually had a 6A category. Um, we did a guarantee, so we ended up in a handicap accessible stateroom. But I'll show you that in a second. But if you look here, um, 5150 and 5650, they have larger balconies and you can see it just from the deck plan. Now 5148 and 5648 have a little bit bigger. They're on an angle. They're probably um, odd size, but I would go for 5150 or 5650. And here we have a picture and let's take a look. I mean, you can see right from here, the size of that balcony. It is a, it is a good size balcony. You could easily have breakfast out there. Um, you know, just a really nice size balcony. Obviously you have the white wall veranda there. So let's see if we can get another picture, but um, let's see. I don't know if there's any other good pictures. I think that first one was probably the best. Yeah, here's a decent picture. So I would say the best in 6A category are going to be 5150 or 5650 on the on deck five. Obviously, again, this is close to the, the kids club, which I had stated before. Now let's look at deck six. So deck six, this is category 6A right here. Now, 6154 and 6654, um, I'll post a link below or a card right here of our tour of our cabin. We were placed in 6654. Again, we were a guarantee cabin, um, which uh, we had this huge balcony here. Um, we also didn't have a split bathroom and we had a handicap accessible bathroom, which we, we dealt with. Um, we got a great date, great rate. And then the room was really, really large. So it was great, but let's look at the other state room. So you have 6152, 6652, 6150 and 6650 all seem to have much larger balconies. I would obviously go for 6152 or 6652. Um, and then even 6148 and 6648 have um, what appears to be good size balconies. So let's look at 6148, see if there's a decent picture. And yeah, it looks like it's a little decent. Um, I don't know if you can see any good pictures here, but it's a good size balcony. Um, but let's look at 6652. Let's see if this has any good pictures of the balcony. Yes, it does. Here we go. Look at that balcony. So this is the best. Now, I would still probably prefer the one on deck five just to be on the same deck as the kids club. But I mean, this if I saw this cabin was available and we're going to book, I would absolutely snatch it up because look at that. We love being on the aft. Obviously, you're going to have a long walk between and then the stateroom is going to be standard stateroom, but you have a really nice large balcony. So really great cabin. Um, so that is going to be deck six for category 6A. Now let's go up to deck seven. And deck seven is not going to have as many. There, um, There's four handicapped accessible here. We'll go over handicap accessible at the end. But you have 7134 and 7634, which are going to have what appears to be a larger size balcony or veranda, and here you go. So it's enclosed white um, white wall veranda, but again, it's a, it's not as big as some of the, at that one on the sixth deck, but it's a good size balcony. So again, I think these are great. These are kind of hidden gems, and they also tend to be a little less expensive than category five. So those are my best. I don't have any worst cat worst in this category. I just think I have some best in the uh, category six A. Now we're gonna move on to the other deluxe verandas and that's 5A, 5B, and 5C. And they start on deck five and actually the only deluxe verandas um, in five in the category five category is 5C and there's 10 of them and they're right here. Now, if I were booking category five, I would probably book 5C because it was it would be the only way I could get on, the, on deck five. I'd have a very, very central location 
very close to the kids club. So that would be ideal. Um, other than that, they go basically, there's no special cabins in category five. There's just matter of location. So we'll go back up to deck six and deck six will have five C on a little bit more in the aft and on the forward. And then five B will be in the center part of the ship. And then on deck seven, you will see five B in the forward part of the ship. 5B north kind of I guess mid to aft and then 5A will be in the middle portion of the ship. Now if you wanted to be again here you have the laundry. If you wanted to be near the laundry then maybe be you know near this cabin these cabins right here. Now if you want to avoid being near the laundry then avoid these cabins right here. But again no special cabins. Um, I think it's just a prefer preference of where you want to be. Do you want to be closer you know a higher deck? Do you want to be close to the kids club like us? Then that would just depend on when, where you book. But other than that um, there really aren't any special or even any you know worse cabins in this category. So the rest of our cabins are going to be on deck eight, which is as you can see right here. And um, we're gonna start with the family veranda stateroom. There's four categories again, 3A, 4A, 4B, 4E. And really it just depends on location. Now the word family in the title means that the stateroom is slightly longer and sleeps up to five as they also have a pull down Murphy bed. So if you can see here, 4E is going to be this light blue here. There are only six of them and one of them is handicap accessible. They are on the aft. Now 4B are going to be these light pink ones, um, as you can see here, and then 4A are these green ones. So the 4A ones are going to be more central, um, as you can see, and then you have um, these 4B, and I think that's it. There's no other 4As. So that's, um, you know, I think it just depends on location. They're all on deck eight. Just depends on if you want to be towards the forward, towards the middle. Um, really no special cabins in this category. Now 3A, there's only 11 of them and these go very fast. And you can see it's these hot pink ones right here. They're kind of spread out throughout the um the deck plan or on, on on the deck and that are those are the family veranda staterooms concierge level only 11 of them of them and it's the only way you can get a concierge room without getting a suite there's only 11 of these rooms so they go very very fast and um you can just see it really just depends on location um i would personally want to be near an elevator near um the stairs now now, this is not like being in a hotel. I forgot to mention this earlier. Being on a cruise ship is not like being in a hotel if you don't want to be near the elevator. It's quite the opposite. You want to be near the elevator. It's actually very quiet. You're not going to have a lot of high traffic or nothing more than anywhere else. So um, it's not going to be really any much louder. It's pretty much blocked off from any noise. But there you have it. Those are the family veranda staterooms. It really just depends on where on deck eight you want to be. So now we're gonna move on to the one bedroom suites and there are 18 of them. These are all concierge. Everything up to now is everything after this is going to be concierge and on deck eight. And there's 18 in one bedroom suites. There are four in category 2A and then 14 in category 2B, four are handicap accessible. So I would say the most desirable or best in this category are going to be these four right here, which are the four 2A. And that is because um, these four have a slightly different layout, which puts um, the twin pull down bed in the living room instead of the master bedroom like the rest. So I think it has a better, highly desirable layout. If you go to the site, you can definitely take a look. You could probably look up these um, videos on YouTube yourself, but this just makes it easier to find. And it's those um, 2A category are probably the most desirable in the uh, one bedroom suite category. Now, if we look, it is going to be these dark teal, four of them. These are these four handicapped accessible, obviously huge rooms, huge balconies. And then, I mean, but still one bedrooms are going to be very large and that's all these teal. And it goes to the same thing as far as where do you want to be? Do you want to be more forward near the forward elevator or do you want to be more central? So it just really depends. Or again, by the aft elevator and aft staircase. Depends on where you want to be. But again, if you're in a one bedroom, I don't think you're going to be complaining. 
Okay, and now we're down to our last four staterooms on the Disney Wonder, and that is, first of all, Category 1B, and that is the two-bedroom suite, and there's two of them, 8016 and 8516. Here, you could click a video and take a look of a tour. Um, there's one on port side, and there's one on starboard side, and then we go to the Royal Suite, Category 1A, and that is... Um, 8030, 8530, Walter E. Disney Suite, or the Roy O. Disney Suite. Again, one on port side, one on starboard side. And this leads me to the other question that is always asked, which is better, port side or starboard side? And I would say the only way I would really recommend a certain side is if you're going to Castaway Key, and that is to try and get starboard side. Doesn't mean port side is bad, but I would try and get on the starboard side because you would be facing Castaway Key, and it's a beautiful view. We were able to view, see the uh, beach, uh, well, from our deck, from our veranda, when we were when we got into port, and then when we got back on the ship, it actually there was a storm, so we were able to kind of watch the storm from our window and watch um, the castaway key from from our veranda window. So it was really nice, but um, it was a really great view. Other than that, other ports I'm really not familiar with. If you're looking for a specific, um, maybe if you're going to Alaska, then I would just probably search that. I don't have any personal recommendations on that. So the only recommendation is if you're going to Castaway Key, try and get on, on starboard side. But again, either way, if you're on port or starboard, you're still on a Disney cruise. Okay, so I did mention we're going to go over the 18 handicap accessible cabins. So as I did state, there's only 18 handicap accessible. If you are going to need to book one of these, you will need some sort of documentation that there is a medical necessity for this. Um, Disney reserves the right to ask for this and your if you book through a uh, travel agent, they will ask, also ask for it. However, I am going to go over it because if you book a guarantee and a guarantee, let's say this, this is um, this is category 9A, so an ocean view category. If you book an ocean view guarantee, there is a possibility you could end up in a handicap accessible stateroom. So if you do, keep in mind there's no split bathroom and then the bathroom, there's no bathtub. So we did get placed in a handicap accessible stateroom. Um, we had one of those large showers with a curtain and it uh, kind of got water everywhere. However, it was really large. And um, now our son doesn't like showers, so it was kind of in in inconvenient. However, um, we had a lot more space, which uh, definitely outweighed being, um, you know, with having without a bathtub. So we, we definitely made do, and then we had that really large balcony. So let's just look, they are on, the handicapped cabins are all on deck six, seven, and eight. So keep that in mind. And again, there's only 18 of them. So if you need one, you need to book it early. So here you again, we have um, Deluxe Ocean View 9A. Um, on the back, you're going to see 6154 and 6654. That is category 6A. Those are, um, again, the Ocean View with Veranda. 6147 and 6647 are 11B, and that is an inside um, stateroom. Now we're going to go up to deck seven, and again, back to category 6A, you have 7136, 7138, 7638, and 7636. Um, those are also category 6A, as I stated. 11A, you have 7131 and 7631. Um, those are inside state rooms. Let's see, I think there's one at the top, yes. Uh, category 10A, and that is um, state room 7509. And then going up to deck eight, um, I believe they're more towards the back. Let's see. And yes, so there is one in category 4E, which is the family. It's the only handicap accessible in family um, ocean view veranda. And that is stateroom 8094. And then you have four one bedroom suites handicapped accessible 8100, 8102, 8600, and 8602. So those are the 18 handicapped accessible cabins. Again, if you need it, book it early. If you don't need it, need it don't book it. And if you absolutely do not want one of these, do not book a guarantee. 
And that's it. Those are my recommendations on best and worst staterooms on the Disney Wonder. As you can see, there's a few hidden gems and uh, no, um, there's no probably bad staterooms, but a lot of things to consider. And a lot of it just comes up to personal preference. Where do you want to be on the ship? And, uh, you know, hopefully you uh, take my advice and have a great cruise. So there you have it. Those are my best and worst state rooms on the Disney Wonder. So I did touch a little bit on the um, handicap, handicap accessible cabins. Keep in mind that those state rooms do not have the split bathroom. So you don't get, you get one big bathroom and there's no bathtub. So you just get that large shower with the curtain. Uh, water tends to be everywhere. We got used to it, it wasn't a problem. My son doesn't really like showers, but we may do. And the space was obviously great, but we did get that because we got it a guarantee cabin. So if you absolutely do need that split bathroom, um, don't book a guarantee cabin because you could end up in a handicap accessible cabin um, that would have that type of bathroom. Also, keep in mind that booking a handicap accessible cabin should only be booked if you need it. I believe that Disney does require some sort of documentation or if you're going through a travel agent, they will ask you for some documentation and they have the, they reserve the right to bump you if they feel like you don't need it and you booked it um, not out of necessity. So keep that in mind. Uh, you should never book a handicapped accessible unless you need it, and um, but you can get it through a guarantee. So, uh, but with that, if you like this video, click like, click and subscribe. That way you get a notification every time I post a new video. I will be doing um, this same type of video on the dream and the fantasy probably in the next week or two. So stay tuned for that and uh, click and subscribe. That way um, you get a notification. Bye everyone.